first of all, congratulations for last night. Um, Thank you so much. How much fun was that? That was really awesome. It was really awesome. Yeah. Uh, getting to on stage, except the award for Darisha was incredible. I texted her as soon as we got off stage um, and she wrote back with a lot of uh, fanfare, exclamation points. She's very excited. <laughs> very cool. Um, how, how you guys have done a couple of films together. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a Cleveland connection? I was trying to figure there, out where it is. Yeah, so um, I actually had worked at a production company uh, that she had also worked at. Um, she was co-directing a film and also producing a film for the production company, and I was associate producing both of those films. So we started working together that way. Um, and one of the films we worked on was called Dispatches from Cleveland, which looked at local organizing efforts around the murder of Tamir Rice in Cleveland. Okay. Um, so as far as Mama Bears, um, yeah. where, A, where did you find these two women? Like, where did you find these women and yeah. how did this all come about? Great question. <laughs> um, so this all came about because Jerisha had read a Huffington Post article that talked about Kimberly and Kai Shapley, mm -hmm. who are uh, one of the three families that our film profiles. Um, you know, she read it and it was, it was about the, um, they're fighting the bathroom bill, right? So it was about Kimberly and Kai Shapley fighting the bathroom bill in their hometown of Pearland, Texas, and how difficult that was for them. But at the bottom of the article, there was a little blurb that said, Kimberly was part of a small private online uh, Facebook group called the Mama Bears, um, and that they were made up of Christian moms who had decided to, you know, accept and affirm, and in Kimberly's case, fight for their LGBTQ children. Um, and Jerisha read that and thought, wow, that's really incredible. You know, I want to know more about these Mama Bears. Um, so she reached out to the woman who runs the Mama Bear group online. Her name is Liz Dyer. You also see her in the film a little bit. Um, and she asked Liz, you know, would any of the moms be interested in working with us? She wrote sort of a long letter about why she thought this potential idea, this movie would be really impactful for folks. And I want to say in a couple of days, she got 25 really beautiful, heartbreaking emails back from moms in this group who were interested in being a part of the film. Um, and that's when I came on board. We sort of went to work trying to figure out which moms sort of made the best sense um, who we'd be able to include. Um, so that's the that's the impetus of Mama Bears. It was just a Huffington Post article. Um, and then, of course, the Mama Bears, doing what they do, totally sprang to action, wanted to help. Um, and we met Sarah Cunningham, who's one of the other mothers featured in our film. She was coming to uh, New York That's uh, for her first Free Mom Hugs tour. She was driving around the country, um, you know, offering free mom hugs. It was an idea that was inspired right after the 2016 election um, because she heard a lot of fear in the LGBTQ plus community and wanted to do something outside of her home state of Oklahoma. You know, she kind of wanted to go on the road. So she and a dear friend of her, Laura's Beth, um, they, they basically, they got an RV. Um, they started driving across country. They ended at Stonewall Inn and we met them in Philadelphia. So we filmed with them for two days. They were our very first shoot ever. And we immediately fell in love with Sarah. You know, we fell in love with her story. Um, and that's how she came on board. So cool. Yeah. yeah we're, our, our team's based out of Dallas. So the Perilyn story captivated, you know, I mean, news, but then kind of sadly kind of went away. Um, yeah. Your film brought back so many emotions and memories and seeing us, you know, the politics behind it is so disgusting when you look at it is this kids being impacted by it. Um, how, how tough is it to tell this story knowing that the, the women involved in the Mama Bears Association are so loving, so caring, and yet what they're having to deal with, the, the vitriol back to them is, yeah, it's, it's horrible. It's really tough. Um, and I think Kimberly and Kai's story especially, I mean, you know, Sarah's story is about, you know, it took her um, some time to affirm her son, but she did it and now she's out there like her hair's on fire, right? She started the Free Mom Hugs movement, you know, she's um, she started that nonprofit around that. She's really, this has become her life's work and it's something that gives her a lot of joy. It's something that's brought her closer to her son. Um, and then if you're looking at Kimberly's story, you know, Kimberly's story is about basically fighting for a basic right for her daughter, fighting for a basic right for her very young daughter, right? 
you know, when we started filming with them, I think Kai was five or six, you know, Kai's 12 now. Um, and Kimberly is, you know, still fighting. She was still fighting, you know, when we, when we premiered the film, you know, in Texas, um, you know, that's when, you know, Governor Abbott had just put out that directive saying, you know, what he wanted to have happen was parents who offer, you know, gender affirming care to their children be investigated by DIFUS and potentially have the children removed. So her story started before we started filming with her, before we ever knew her, and it continued, you know, past the edit of the film. So for her, it's, 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 it's a fight, you know, for her daughter, for her daughter's rights. I mean, even technically, it's still going on yeah. to this very day. I mean, yeah. we have elections in November that may very well, depending on if Governor Abbott continues or not, mm -hmm. could completely change the face of things if Beto takes over. So I'm, I'm curious as far as the timeliness of your film. Yeah. Um, I mean, it could have been timely three years ago, but it's it's extremely timely right now. Unfortunately, it is extremely timely right now. Um, you know, we wish that it weren't. We wish that things weren't happening in the way that they were. You know, the beginning of this year, I think in the first quarter of 2022, there were over 200 anti-LGBTQ+, anti-trans bills being introduced across the nation. Um, and that's just going to continue. You know, we don't know what's going to happen in Texas. Obviously, we've seen what's already happening in Florida places like that um, Ohio right there's there's a lot going on legislatively um, and I think this fall legislative season is going to be it's going to be a lot it's going to be really intense um, what we're working on right now is actually fundraising for our impact campaign um, which has a couple sort of prongs to it one of them is to go to these states where we have anti-LGBTQ um, plus legislation on the ballots and work with local organizations that are already doing that that understand the community that are doing the work sort of boots on the ground every day and hold screenings of the film um, for people to hopefully get inspired to get active you know to try and either fight against this legislation or figure out within their own community what resources will be available if that legislation passes and what they're able to do you know if it's about volunteering their time their talent right something to kind of help make these things better for folks across the country so that's one arm of the impact campaign that we're currently fundraising for and the other arm is to take Take this film into churches that are um, considering becoming affirming um, and affirming means you know accepting LGBTQ plus um, people in the church as full members of the church they're allowed to get married there they believe that you know same-sex marriage is holy all of that um, and having uh, conversations based in nonviolent communication practices um, with folks you know so they're able to really ask questions you know I feel like a lot of the problem we have is you know there is a very very deep divide obviously <laughs> in our country right now and a lot of it comes from people not being able to have these conversations people people being afraid to have these conversations and people not feeling comfortable with having these conversations right so the idea is to be able to um go in there and have people ask questions and you know have there be a non-judgmental atmosphere to hopefully have people work towards you know hopefully a more accepting more affirming church community it's amazing to see these conservative women go so far out for their children, but also expand past that. Um, they easily could protect their children without being so vocal or, yeah. or creating these uh, organizations to do this and what you guys are bringing into it on another level. I'm curious, um, is there any hopes of extending it to the other faith bases out there, you know, going to temples or going to mosques mm -hmm. or going to other, maybe not just religious places, but schools? Yeah. Yeah, so there they are actually doing that so there is a mama dragons group which is based in the mormon faith um and you know we get um catholic moms christian moms in sort of the the generic mama bears group that exists um as far as going to schools i don't know um i mean the mama bears are kind of everywhere they're re they're moms right so they're like really organized <laughs> they're on top of what they're doing and they're really passionate about it and i feel like a lot of the moms because the mama bear groups now have expanded not everyone was very religious, right? That's kind of how the group was when it began, when Kimberly and Sarah were a part of the group. Um, and it's expanded out a little bit more. Now it's about, you know, moms on different parts of the, the political spectrum um, who want to just affirm their LGBTQ plus children, right? They have sort of subgroups. Um, 
but I think really it's just about these moms getting out there and just you know the love that you have for your kid is sort of unrivaled it's unmatched it's really you know it compels you to do a lot of things and this is one of those things so it's really awesome and you know free mom hugs mama bears they have chapters all over the country they have mama bear meetups you know they work on legislation they write letters to folks they show up they organize you know when we premiered in Texas we held um, a rally at the this the the state capitol steps and the mama bear showed up right from all over Texas because that's what they do I'm curious as as a producer of this type of material obviously the the life of this can extend well past the film life mm -hmm. how the investment level from a producer like you has to be different than any other type of production on a, on a film. Where does that motivation come from? Where do you yeah. personally feel about uh, bringing this to the forefront? Obviously, you're passionate about it. it. It's it's not just another film. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think to have worked on a film for five years and to be constantly scrambling for funding for five years and now have to scramble for funding for the impact campaign, like, you have to love it, otherwise you're not going to do it, right? Like, there's no way. Um, um, you know, I'm a person who grew up in the church. Um, I left the church when I was 16. Um, I didn't have a great time in the church. Um, and hearing the story, you know, the first time Dorisha told me about it, we were sitting in a coffee shop and she was kind of explaining the idea, saying she had just gotten some seed money um, from, you know, an EP on the, who now became an EP on the film. And she told me about it. And, you know, I just, I, I burst out crying because I understood how important this film was and how much it needed to be made and how much people needed to hear these stories. Um, and I mean, every screening we've had, you know, we've been on the festival circuit now for about gosh, like six months and every screening I'm able to go to, regardless of, you know, the attendance level, um, there's someone there that, you know, will ask a question or tell me a story that just, you know, it moves you and you feel like the film has really touched them. And I mean, that's why, that's why we're going to keep doing it because yeah, it's I, the moms are incredible. And I feel like that really comes across. There's a lot of love in the film, even though there's a lot of <laughs> there's some hate as well right the love kind of comes back to com combat the hate but um there's a lot of love in the film and you know we work on this because we really believe in the power of this story and this message to hopefully change some hearts and minds thank you for that yeah um i'd love to give you the chance to kind of wrap up by where can people find out about the film, about sure. these causes, anything you can share with us? Yeah, that's great. Um, so you can find about the film on mamabearsdoc.com. That's uh, Mama Bears D-O-C, and Mama is M-A-M-A. -M -A. Um, and that same handle, Mama Bears Doc, uh, we use that on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can find us there. Um, if you want to learn more about the uh, Mama Bears organization, you can go to realmamabears.org, um, freemomhugs.org. Um, there's a ton of resources on all of those pages. We link back to some of them on our film page as well. Laura, thank you for being a part of this team to make this, but also thank you for bringing it tall grass to Texas. Um, it's such a special, important thing, so thank you. Thank you so much.